Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Start lights are green. All radio beacons are go. Countdown, Countdown continues. The zero expansion excursion vehicle will be joining the main ship at zero minus five. Phase one, now completed. This is assembly control closing down. Dr. Grant, Dr. Pierce. 
Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Paul? Greg? Brad? Now, this is a tough assignment. And if this mission is successful, you will be the first men to land on Mars. This project has been the most costly yet devised by man. However, the safety of the crew and passengers still takes top priority. Now, is that clearly understood? Captain Paul Travers? Yes, sir. Space Captain Greg Martin? Yes, sir. Space Navigator Brad Newman? Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Grant? Yes, sir. Dr. Pierce? Yes, sir. Okay. Away you go. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Right. This is it. Control from zero X, height 20,000 feet, airspeed Mach 1. Commence chemical engine countdown on green light. Roger. Back trim, Roger.
out of control. Base, this is Zero X. Our control system is jammed. Nose is dropping. Ejecting nose cone. Feet a minute. Air speed, Mach of 1.4. This is Central Control. Air Sea Rescue Units immediate launch. Vector 276 magnetic, range 172 miles. Captain Travers, we are still unable to free the control system. I'm ordering crew to eject. Repeat, eject. Flight deck to escape unit. Everyone ready, Greg? Okay, Paul. All in position. Okay, Greg. Coming back now. now had time to study the very fine report that has been produced by our aviation investigators. We at the Martian Exploration Center wish to thank those concerned for their untiring efforts in this direction. Although the report runs to 862 pages and meticulously describes every happening that led up to the crash 24 months ago, the conclusion is all too simple. Sabotage. Now, before we progress further with this meeting, I would ask you for a vote of confidence in the findings of this very fine report. Thank you, gentlemen, for your unanimous support. 24 months have now elapsed since the tragic crash of the Zero X. And in eight weeks' time, Earth will once again be in a suitable position in relation to Mars to make the second attempt. Can I take it that I have your approval for this, too?
I think our security arrangements are inadequate and would suggest that we ask International Rescue to be present at the next launching. Are you suggesting, sir, that we're incapable of handling our own security arrangements? I have 862 pages here, sir, which say just that. Well, Father, take off a schedule for tomorrow morning. You'll have to make a decision soon, Dad. Even if it's no. This is a tough one. Hmm. This is what we do. Scott? Yes, sir? Launch Thunderbird 1, proceed to Glenfield, and stand by there for the takeoff of Zero X. Yes, sir. Virgil, launch Thunderbird 2 and follow Scott to Glenfield. When Zero X takes off, escort it through the atmosphere on the first part of its journey. Yes, sir. Father, can I... Yes, you can. Launch Thunderbird 3 and orbit the Earth until Zero X has established its course to Mars. Gee, thanks, Dad. What about me, Father? Well, it's unlikely that you'll be needed, but you'd better be ready in case. Yes, sir. Okay, boys. Thunderbirds are go. Your decision, Mr. Tracy. Yes, I only hope it was the right one. 
Well, I suppose now that the boys are going to be at the launching of Zero X, the safety of the crew is assured, but... But what about the saboteurs? Do you think they will strike again? See, what's the time, Denton? Well, uh, just about 11 o'clock, Mr. Tracy. That makes it about 4 p.m. in England, tea time. I don't understand, Mr. Tracy. Well, those saboteurs you were talking about, if they do strike again, I know just the person to take care of them. International Rescue, England. Lady Penelope speaking. Hi, Penny. Well, I've made my decision. We're going to oversee the Zero X launch. Thunderbirds 1, 2, and 3 are on their way. I want you to go to the States immediately and ensure that there's no sabotage attempt this time. FAB, Jeff. I'll fly over with Fab One right away. There's a big press conference tomorrow evening. You'll be representing a British magazine. FAB. You rag, belated? Yes, Parker. Get out the Rolls Royce. I'll call the airport. We're taking off for America with Fab One immediately. <laughs> Thunderbird 2 from Mobile Control, you are clear to land. Mobile Control from Thunderbird 2, FAB. Well, I guess we're all set. By tomorrow morning, Thunderbird 3 will be in the correct orbital position to keep an eye on the launch path, and we've got all our gear here. Thanks. I guess that's all we can do for the moment. Uh, see you at the press conference tonight. Oh, no thanks. As far as we're concerned, the only good publicity is no publicity. And in conclusion, as I always say, the only bad publicity is no publicity. So have a good conference, but please be brief. Our astronauts can only spare you half an hour because, as I'm sure you are aware, they have a very busy schedule ahead of them tomorrow. Captain Paul Travers. Yes, ma'am. I'm Lady Penelope Crichton Ward, uh, representing the Universal Mirror. First question. Tell me, what do you find most frightening? your deal at this press conference, or your flight tomorrow in Zero X. <laughs> well, without question, this press conference, ma'am. Thank you, Captain Travers. Now, I'm sending a messenger over with a small St. Christopher, specially struck for the occasion by the Universal Mirror. I would like to tell my readers that you'll be wearing it during the flight. It'll be a pleasure, Lady Penelope. That's very kind of you. Well, it looks as if my time is up. Best of luck for tomorrow. Captain Paul Travers. Package from Lady Penelope. Universal mirror, sir. All right. Well, there'll be three crew and two scientists. Right. Right again. Yep, at 1,400 hours tomorrow. Sixty minutes to lift off. Commence Zero X free flight assembly. Thunderbird 2, the mobile control. Are you ready, Virgil? Standing by, Scott. Mobile control, calling Thunderbird 3. Okay, Scott, in orbit. I should be able to see Zero X as it leaves the Earth's atmosphere. Unless liftoff time is altered. FAB, Ellen. <laughs> Zero X, moving 
I thought it was too good to be true, my lady. Lady Penelope calling Scott at mobile control. Oh, what's the trouble, Lady Penelope? Number five, negative. Everybody okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Everything's just fine. And how about you, Dr. Grant? Are you okay? I keep quite still, Doctor. There's something wrong with your face. He's got a gun. I should allow yourself ten seconds before coming through this door after me. Otherwise, you might get your head blown off. I think I've located number five, m'lady. That's him, Parker. Well done, Penelope. Number five was a phony, all right, but he's got away. You'd better take care of him. Right, Scott. Leave it to me. But before I go, you'll find the real Dr. Grant on a bearing of 174 and a range of 1,204 yards for my present position. F.A.B. I can see the gentleman in question ahead, m'lady. He's just leaving the control tower in a motor car. Now, you'll find the real Dr. Grant somewhere in this building here. Right. Airport police, this is assembly control. Search the missile store, block F, immediately, and locate the whereabouts of Dr. Grant. How are you feeling, Dr. Grant? Well, just fine. There was no violence. He just told me at gunpoint, tied me up, and locked me in the missile store. I guess it's another sabotage attempt. So much for the good luck charm given to me by Lady Penelope. Safety belts on, m'lady. Safety belts on, Foils now, Melody. been accomplished, he's waiting to pick him up in that helicopter, lady. Mobile control to Thunderbird 2, launching underway. You'd better lift off yourself. Thunderbird 2, FAB.
don't think there's much point in looking for survivors, Parker. No, my lady. Look, my lady. Look. What a magnificent sight. <laughs> Central Control from Zero X. Lift off, A OK. Height 50,000 feet. Mach 2.8. Mobile Control from Thunderbird 2. I'm returning to base. Zero X is entering rarefied atmosphere and she's doing fine. In a few minutes, it'll be over to Alice. OK, Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird 3, can you hear me? Mobile control, I hear you. Alan, Zero X, entering rarefied atmosphere. It should be with you in approximately one minute. Stand by to release lifting bodies. Standing by. Computer reports jettison lift bodies, 10 seconds. Release on green light. Roger. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Computer reports chemical rockets, five seconds. Computer reports jettison nose cone, 10 seconds. Roger. Central control, this is Zero X. Lifting bodies and nose cone jettison. Escape velocity reached. We are leaving Earth's atmosphere. Okay, switch an arc jet engine. Mobile control, this is Thunderbird 3. I can see Zero X. She's on course and accelerating to 100,000 miles per hour. Okay, thanks, Alan. You'd better return to base. FAB. International Rescue calling Zero X. May we offer our congratulations on a superb liftoff. The only thing we really want to say is thanks. And may I add my thanks and congratulations, too. Mobile control from Fab One. Are we clear? Hi there, Penelope. All clear. I'm on my own. How'd it go? F-A-B. Well done, Penelope. Well, it's been a hectic time for all of us. How about us all getting together tonight over a drink? I hear there's a fab nightclub called the Swinging Star near my hotel. F-A-B? Oh, uh, hi there, Penelope. I just happen to be monitoring your frequency, and I, uh... Well, what do you say, Virgil? Are you game? I sure am. You're going where? Ah, uh, the, uh, the, the Swinging Stars, Father. It's some kind of nightclub. Well, that means you won't be back here until morning. Sure, I understand you need a break, but this is a tough job we're doing here. Mr. Tracy, all work and no play makes Scott a dull boy. Hmm, okay then, Scott. Have a good time. Gee, thanks, Dad. I've made arrangements with Glenn Field. They'll be able to reach us by radio at any time. Now, don't forget, Dad, we'll be at the Swinging Star. All right, Scott. The Swinging Star? Yeah, that's right. It's some sort of a nightclub. They're all going out tonight to celebrate. A nightclub? And I'm stuck back here at base. Just my luck. Say, Tintin, 
Why don't we go off to the mainland tonight? Just the two of us. Oh, that would be lovely, Alan. I'll wear my new dress. What goes on around here? Have you all gone crazy? This is international rescue, remember? We can't leave the base unmanned. Sorry, Tintin. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Tracy. I understand. Well, I don't. I'm going to bed. But won't you have some coffee, Alan? No, thanks. It keeps me awake. Zero X to Earth. We have just touched down successfully on the surface of Mars. All systems are go. We'll radio a full report to you in 30 minutes ground elapsed time. Dr. Grant, what do you think? My first thought is to get as many samples back to Earth as possible so that we can look into the whole question of the possibility of life existing on this planet. Sure, but what's your initial reaction? I think the atmosphere would be breathable, but too thin to sustain life as we know it. These strange formations seem to be all over this part of the planet's surface. Don't ask me why, but they worry me. Now, Ray, don't let your imagination run riot. Yeah, Tony, I know it would be all too easy to happen up here, but can you account for the strange formation of those rocks? Well, obviously, a considerable study will have to be made before we know the answer. Clearly, gentlemen, this is one of the many things we have to investigate. Uh, we're falling behind schedule. Can we uh, move on? Sure, Paul. Uh, sorry about that. You know, Ray, I don't like the look of these peculiar formations either. Though I'm sure they're just rot. I've been watching them very carefully. There's no sign of movement. I think we'd better take a sample back to Earth. I must say, I think that would be a wise precaution, Tony. Uh, can you break one up for us, Paul? Then I'll go out and collect some pieces. OK, Paul. Not too big a charge now. I want to get a sizable piece. OK, Ray. and get my gear. Uh, Greg, get the airlock ready. OK, sir. Zero 
tracks from MEV. We're under attack from a form of life we do not understand. Require immediate rendezvous with main body. I'm just coming around on third orbit. We'll be in rendezvous position in four minutes. Okay, Brad, we'll take a base of action down here until you're in position. Give us lift off clearance. The second it's okay. We'll do. But, Paul, we must lift off immediately. We don't know what damage these things can do to us. Take it easy, Doctor. We can't lift off until the main ship's in the correct rendezvous position. Otherwise, we'll run out of gas and be stranded in space. Chirp to starboard, Greg. There's a whole line of them ahead of us. better return their fire. We can't take too much of this punishment. Okay, Skipper. So far, all systems are go. Down. We're lifting off. But, Paul, you may not make it. You may not have enough fuel. With no choice, we're coming up. OK, Greg, lift off. from Zero X. I have you on my screen. You're approaching Zero X orbital path. Five seconds to retro firing. Four, three, two, one. Retros. Well, at least the Martian excursion vehicle has joined up successfully with the main body of Zero X. You think they'll get back okay? Well, according to the reports that John monitored in the space station, the damage to the MEV has not impaired their efficiency, so there shouldn't be any problems. As a matter of fact, I, um, I had a word with the controller at Glen Field this morning. He reckoned their re-entry into Earth's atmosphere will be pretty straightforward. They've done it a hundred times before on test flights. What's the scheduled date for the re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, Dan? Well, their flight takes them six weeks. So they should be arriving on the morning of September 2nd. Zero X from Central Control. You are in correct re-entry attitude and are about to enter Earth's atmosphere. Roger, Central Control. Retros. Zero X from Central Control. Lifting bodies now at 50,000 feet. Rendezvous with lifting bodies at 120,000 feet, 20 seconds. Reduce speed to Mach 2. Rendezvous about to take place. Roger.
bringing in lip body too. Roger. Radio control failure. I can't hold her. What happened? Central Control, this is Zero X. Emergency. We have lost lift body two following a collision. Roger, Zero X. I'm sending up another lift body immediately. That won't help us, I'm afraid. The locking gear was damaged in the collision. Check on all systems. Show fuel systems go. All control systems go. Remote control radio circuits are dead. Escape unit is... Central control from Zero X. Escape unit circuits are dead. Okay, John, I get the picture. Continue to monitor their frequency. FAB. Right. Now we gotta move fast. Zero X is coming in on one wing. Due to damage, it's impossible to get another wing attached. She's unable to maintain height and will crash in approximately 30 minutes. The most recent check of the control systems aboard shows that they have an escape unit failure. Unless we can get the crew and passengers out before that aircraft hits the ground, they are all doomed men. Okay, Scott, you know what to do. Take brains with you. You'll need technical advice. Yes, sir. Okay, Virgil, take pod four with the air-to-air -air rescue equipment and rendezvous with Zero X. Yes, sir. Alan? Yes, sir. I want you to board the Zero X and fix that hatch. Yes, sir. Father? Yes, Gordon, you'll be needed too. Off you go. Yes, sir. Rate of descent stabilized at 3,000 feet a minute. Airspeed, Mach 1.2. We can't slow the rate of descent. The motors are flat out. Over. Zero X, Roger. Stand by. Emergency control, this is central control. Contact Washington immediately. Zero X crash position established as Craigsville, population 4,800. Impact time, 35 minutes. I've tried everything in the book, but the escape unit system is dead. If only International Rescue had been with us this time, they might have come up with something. International Rescue, Zero X Central Control here. This is an emergency. Central Control, this is International Rescue, Thunderbird 1. Anticipated your call, we're on our way. ETA, Glensfield, 10 minutes. Zero X, this is Central Control. Change to Channel 4. International Rescue are on their way and they require to make contact with you. Is that understood? Yes, sir, that's understood. Changing to Channel 4. Gee, I'll be glad when Scott's got his mobile control operating. We'll need his assistance in locating the Zero X. He must be getting pretty close by now. I'd better get my rescue gear on. Right. Gordon, you better get off the Astrodome. Okay, Virgil. Zero X, this is International Rescue, mobile control. Can you hear me? Over. International Rescue, this is Zero X. Yes, we can hear you, loud and clear. Zero X and Thunderbird 2 from mobile control. Transmit 10 seconds of unmodulated carrier wave on this frequency. One at a time, please. Zero X. Zero X, roger. Thunderbird 2. Roger, Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird 2 from mobile control. Steer 0, zero 2. Fly at 45,000 feet. With your present air speed, you should sight zero X in approximately four minutes. Roger, will do. Zero X, this is mobile control. Mobile control, this is zero X. 
Well, here are your instructions. Okay, go ahead. There are approximately 15 minutes left before your aircraft crashes. And for the next 10 minutes, lose as little height as you possibly can. Keep your aircraft steady. Watch the trim. In precisely 10 minutes from now, switch to automatic pilot and go, together with your passengers, into the escape unit. And then pray. In the meantime, take further instructions from the pilot of Thunderbird 2. Scott, I can see it. Alan, Gordon, stand by. Zero X dead ahead. FAB, Virgil. Zero X, this is Thunderbird 2. We're coming in below you. Reduce speed to low safe cruising and lower nose landing gear. We're going to put a man aboard and attempt to fix the escape unit. So that's what they're going to try to do. Lower nose wheel, Greg. Gordon, flight control over here. Okay, Virgil. cylinder, you will find a yellow wiring harness. Follow this through to a red junction box marked E-U-C. Got it. Doctors Grant and Pierce, hold tight. I'm removing you to escape unit. Okay, Paul. transistorized radio induction unit on the side of the junction box. Okay, Brains. Right, Alan. Now, all you have to do is remove the screws that are anchoring the yellow and green lines and reconnect them on one block so we get a direct link, green to yellow, all the way down the bank. Okay, friend. Brad, Greg, I'm sending you both back to the escape unit. Right, sir. Switching to automatic pilot. No, no, don't switch to the automatic pilot. I'm staying here. I'll come back when we're at zero feet. That guy's risking his life down there, and it's the least I can do. I'll stay with you. Me too. No. There won't be time for us all to get into the escape unit at the last moment. I'm sending you two back now, and that's an order. Yes, sir. Good luck, Paul. from Thunderbird 2. Are you all in escape unit? Thunderbird 2 from Zero X. All in escape unit, except me. I can do better than the automatic pilot in holding this craft steady. I'll go back into the escape unit either when it's fixed or when we're at zero feet. It'll help. Thanks. You won't be able to make it in time, surely. They're all running out of time up there. Gordon. 
Alan isn't through yet. And we're dangerously near the ground. Play out more cable. I'm coming alongside Zero X. Okay, Virgil. Glenfield, this is Washington. Evacuation of Craigsville is now complete. I'm going to overrun my engines. It'll give us a few more seconds. Did they make it? This is Thunderbird 2 calling 0X escape unit. Are you okay? Thunderbird 2 from 0X escape unit. Yes, we are okay. Paul only just made it. He's badly shaken up. But he's gonna be all right. Did you hear that, Alan? I heard. Did you hear that, Central Control? We heard. Well done. Virgil from Gordon. We can't retrieve Alan. Due to his hurried departure, the cables are now fouling the side of Thunderbird 2. We'd better drop him to the ground. F.A.V. Gordon. Say, Virgil, I think that's Fab One below. Thunderbird 2 from Fab One. Virgil, we're down below. Why not drop Alan down here? Yeah, Penelope, I can see you. Say, how did you get here? As soon as we heard the forecast crash position, we made our way here. Okay, I'm down. Cable released. Gee, it, it sure was swell of you to come here and pick me up, Penelope. After that brilliant performance, I think that's the least you deserve. Now jump in. I assume, madam, that the first call will be glad filled and then hot to your hotel. Is that correct? That, Parker, is quite correct. Gee, you mean you're going to take me to the Swinging Star? Just the two of us? Just the two of us. This must be the most memorable day of my life. You know, Penelope, I'm always treated like a kid back at the base. You know, being the youngest and all. But tonight, being alone with you, I feel like a real grown man. But you are, Alan. You are. Particularly with that snazzy mustache you're wearing. Well, uh, 
You see, we have to wear a disguise sometimes when we're out in public, in case we're recognized. Do you really think it suits me? Oh, excuse me, Alan. I think the gentleman on the next table wants something. Hmm? Would you mind passing that ashtray? Disguise. Pretty good, eh? Why, Dad, what are you doing here? Just thought I'd come along and congratulate you on your great performance today, boy. Me too, Alan. A great job. Scott! Thanks to you, Alan, another international rescue success. Verge! Who else is here? And I think it was a splendid effort. I, I really do. Even though I can't see you. Thanks, Brains. And I guess the little lady with you must be Tintin. Yes, Alan. Congratulations on your performance today. And tonight. And there was I, thinking we were all alone. Remember, Alan, one of the most comforting feelings a man can have in this world of ours is never to be alone. To Alan, the hero of the day. To, to Alan. Alan.